بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد Muhammad, Messenger of God. Who gave him this authority? God sent Muhammad as a mercy to mankind. The Caesar Heraclius was the ruler of the Eastern Roman Empire from 610 to 641 of the Christian era. His reign coincided with the advent of the Prophet Muhammad. He saw Islam grow and the Prophet complete his mission and die aged 63. He is known for questioning Abu Sufyan, a non-Muslim at the time, to check if the Prophet ﷺ was real. He even asked his subjects to accept Islam, but seeing their outrage, he downplayed it by saying he was just testing their faith. Even though Heraclius lived through all of that, and even received two letters of invitation to Islam from the Prophet ﷺ, due to greed and lust for power, he didn't convert. He ruled for around a decade after the Prophet ﷺ had died. But the Prophet's dying must have deeply affected him, because he had some burning questions which he could no longer ask him. Instead, Heraclius sent his questions to the followers of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, the Sahaba. He was probably in deferent awe in the same way as Abu Dhar anhu, who said, The Messenger of Allah ﷺ left us behind. But there is no bird that flaps its wings in the sky except that he gave us some knowledge about it. After the Prophet ﷺ had passed away, Heraclius wrote a letter to Caliph Muawiyah in Damascus and said, If there remains among them anything left of prophethood, then he will inform me about whatever I ask them. So he wrote to him, inquiring about three unusually specific things, the Milky Way galaxy, about rainbows, and about a place on which the sun has not shone except for an hour. Muawiyah asked the Sahaba to respond. Abdullah ibn Abbas anhu, the Prophet's cousin, was chosen. In a Mokuf report with Marfu Hukam, meaning it stops at a Sahaba yet contains beliefs derived from the Prophet وسلم, from At Tabrani, ibn Abbas anhu, wrote back The rainbow is a protection for the people of the earth from flooding, and the galaxy is a door to the heavens from which the earth is separated. As for the place on which the sun has not shone, except for an hour of the daytime, it is that which lies underneath the sea that was parted for the children of Israel. Ibn Abbas's response was breathtaking, and when Heraclius received it, it must have dawned on him that Muhammad was indeed a true prophet. Now, I will try to break down the response to Heraclius' burning questions through the lens of Islam and derive some benefits. Firstly, the rainbow is a sign to show Allah's mercy after the great flood of Noah, to assure mankind that they will never be totally destroyed by a worldwide flood ever again. In a weak narration in Adab al-Mufrad, Ibn Abbas anhu said, the rainbow is security from being destroyed by flood after the people of Noah a.s. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, we find in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 to 15, And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you, and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Again, seen through Muslim lenses regarding Israeliyat or biblical reports, we neither confirm or deny them, but acknowledge them only if they align with the benchmark of the Quran and Sunnah. In this case, the rainbow sign seems okay, but to say that God needs to see a rainbow to remember his promise disrespectfully paints him as forgetful, needy, and unaware. Rainbows are actually a full circle and not an arch and it depends on perspective. There are videos of aircraft flying through rainbow loops. The symbolism of a circle covered in seven layers of color looks like rings of global protection. Apart from the tropo, strato, meso and thermosphere that deflect harmful rays and burn up asteroids, 
The rainbow visually shows seven heavens surrounding a spherical earth. But where did the water that caused the flood come from? Linked to the second of Heraclius' questions, the Milky Way galaxy as a gate or doorway to the heavens was also mentioned by Ali radiallahu, who said, It is the water trough, or loop of the bag, from which the heavens open up, flowing water. It seems that it is the source of the water, rather than earthly clouds, that flooded the entire world during Noah's deluge. Most astronomers now believe that asteroids carried the primary or primordial source of water to Earth. In another authentic narration, Ibn Abbas who said, The Milky Way is the door of the heavens and forms a furrow through it. The opening, therefore, is a distinct furrow or channel that runs between our universe and the next. It is interesting to note that when the Prophet ﷺ went up to the heavens on his miraculous night journey and ascension, Al-Isra wal Miraj, that both aspects of a gateway and sources of earthly water were witnessed. It seems that there is a portal within the Milky Way that separates our time-space continuum with that of the heavens. In Bukhari, the angel Gabriel took him to the heaven of the world and knocked on one of its doors. There, he met with angelic gatekeepers called the dwellers of heaven, who confirmed the identity of Prophet Muhammad before allowing him to pass to the higher heavens. Also, whilst he was in the nearest sky, in the heavens, he saw two rivers flowing out of it. And on asking what they were, he was told, these are the sources of the Nile and the Euphrates, further indicating the origins of the primary water on earth. 500 years travel separates each heaven. The ascension of Prophet Muhammad is not unique, as biblically others such as Enoch, Elijah and Jesus, peace be upon them all, have all been lifted into the heavens. Muslims believe that Jesus is alive in the second sky, in stasis and will return to earth. Astronomers have also observed a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A star near the Milky Way center. Theories speculate what lies beyond the event horizon, whether white holes, wormholes, or portals to other dimensions. Seeing as Jesus will return without aging at 33 years, as if in suspended animation, and even the Prophet ﷺ returned after his ascension to find his bed still warm, it may be understood that beyond the Baba Sama, or doorway to heaven, earthly time does not apply, but eternity might begin past the water at the edge of our universe, towards the throne of Allah. I will talk about the seven heavens and seven earths at a later date, inshallah. Finally, the third of Heraclius' questions about an area on the earth where the sun has only shone for an hour, never to have done so again, refers to when Moses Islam, and the Israelites crossed the Red Sea pursued by Pharaoh. The twelve tribes of Israel ran to safety when the Red Sea parted, whereas Pharaoh drowned. Upon death, he professed faith in God, but Angel Gabriel shoved mud into the tyrant's mouth to prevent God's mercy from reaching him. The story is well known, whereas its location is controversial, but thanks to Ibn Abbas's response, we can add credibility to an area near the real Mount Sinai called Jabal al Lowes in Saudi Arabia, near the province of Al Badd in Tabuk. A 16-kilometer underwater land bridge connects Egypt's Al Nuweiba beach to Saudi Arabia, near the Gulf of Aqaba. The northern side dips to 900 meters, and its southern to 1,200 meters. Yet the seabed bridge itself is merely a shallow 90 meters deep. According to Healthline.com, the average time it takes to run 16 kilometers for men and women aged 40 to 44 is 53 minutes and 11 seconds and 1 hour and 2 minutes and 37 seconds, respectively. The sun shone on the seabed for a solar hour, while the Israelites crossed to safety in an hour. Traces of the Israelites remain in the Tabuk region, near an area called Neom, that is being developed for Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030. The Prophet ﷺ foretold of Tabuk, If you live long enough, you will see much greenery here. So there you go. Heraclius, the leader of the Western world, got his answers, but having knowledge is useless unless you act on it, with wisdom and benefit from it. The Caesar blew his chance. You, though, dear viewer, can embrace Islam. Of course, many more benefits can be derived from the fascinating narration of Ibn Abbas, 
but I hope that this has been an enlightening episode into viewing the world as seen through Muslim lenses and the desperate need for creed.